by today we're, we're kind of feeling like this. <laughs> so this is just a quick um, peanut gallery um, of the tech leads just talking over what was achieved this week. So what we did when I started talking about it, just went through the slides and saw what people had planned to do and what was actually achieved. I'll talk a little bit at the end, but let's let the tech leads go first. So for dessert, in this order here, we're going to go over the individual teams, um, talk a little, bit, a little bit about the summit, and then I'll do a wrap. All right, so the validation team this week, or the lobby team, as it seems to have been launched into. Um, we have support for IMX53 boards in Lava now, thanks to a new revision of the board that we got from the youth from Freescale. And uh, so that's working well, and we'll get added to the lab on Monday or Tuesday this week as soon as, uh, as, soon as Dave can get it in the wrap. Um, we don't have them in quantity yet, but we expect that that should be cleared up in a few months, and we're looking forward to that. Um, we uh, had some good discussions with the power management working group in the barn about the power management tools that are being developed, and uh, we have identified some areas that, that they need to, to fix some things in the tool, and also some areas that, that we need to work on in Lava that will help us integrate this. And, uh, Hopefully, pretty soon, this after four months or so, when that tool is available. Um, and we might be able to get it sooner, but um, we, we have a pretty clear path forward on that side now. On uh, continuous integration, we made some really good progress on uh, both Android continuous integration testing and on kernel side as well. Um, so, we, we actually have Android using this today, and we're adding a feature to, to Baba that will let them get a link to where the results are going to be as soon as the results are posted. That way they can go ahead and update their status page on the Android uh, build system uh, so that it will point to the results in the correct place. We're also adding an API that will let them uh, query those results and post the actual results on the page as well so you don't even have to click on the <coughs> links. Um, one of the interesting things that came out of a discussion on Tuesday, and we've kind of spent some time hashing it out over the rest of the week, is replacing QA tracking and how we might be able to do that with Lava. Um, if, you've, if you've used QA Tracker, then it, it, it's a pretty neat tool in that it was easy, it was kind of a freebie because we had already been using it before for some things, um, but it has some obvious limitations. Um, first of all, it only has a single test result. So, uh, so say you're testing an image and you're testing uh, a Ubuntu desktop image on Panda, and at the end, maybe it boots and some things kind of work, but, but then there are a lot of things that don't work. And you only have one place to say whether the test passed or failed for that. So it's kind of unclear to the tester, OK, did I call this a pass or a fail? You know, how serious of a bug does it have to be before I say the whole thing has failed? Equally, on the other side, for a release manager who's looking at that information, it's also ambiguous for them because they may have two people that reported basically the same result, the same bugs, and one person decided to call it a pass. One person decided to call it a fail, so is the image good or not? So this is going to let us break down the, uh, these manual tests into very easy to construct uh, test cases that can be individually tracked for pass-fail results, and also allows to provide more customized reporting and looking at trends over time. That will help on the release management side for being able to combine the automated test results with the manual test results to get a better, clearer picture of whether that's a good image that we want to go out with. Um, uh, we had some other things as well. Um, we had some good improvements to Lava Test. Lava Test uh, now has support for out of tree tests. We need a little bit of work in the dispatcher, but that's that's going to be pretty tiny. And uh, we'll be also adding some documentation there for Lava Test uh, for people that want to develop tests against it. Um, Origin is it's almost there. We have a bunch of new Origin boards, and we were able to get it booted right away. The image looked really solid, but um, we didn't have uh, USB working properly on it. Because we need to do a USB Ethernet adapter on that board, we need that work. But we've talked to the landing team about that, and other problem, and expect to have a good thing. Thanks. All right, so in addition to hacking on boards all week, we worked with the multimedia working group to integrate and test libjpeg turbo. We worked with the power team to sort out some issues that came in with PowerTop. And we worked with the graphics team to start GeoMark integration. 
did a lot of education this week. How does Android work? How do you integrate builds? How to, what, what do you need to worry about with Bionic, so on and so forth? And we wanted to make sure we touched base with all the workers <coughs> and all the landing teams uh, to make sure that they were aware of the issues and that we could actually sit down and, and work through work through some things in real time. So, as you've seen, we have done a bunch of work on, on the platforms. We actually worked with the kernel working group to sort out an issue with, uh, with Suspend, and that seems to be working good. Uh, we also worked with the infrastructure team to deploy Garrett, and we'll be switching trees over here and, and getting builds out of the Garrett-hosted gits uh, very soon. Although we're, we're, we've switched over, uh, we've switched the manifests over, so, so it's official. <coughs> And uh, <laughs> Keith did these slides. I didn't think it was like this. Anyway, uh, we we sort we got this uh, got this uh, demo out the door, which which uh, I was really pumped about getting to work because I really wanted to show uh, what Lenaro, uh, the fruits of Lenaro's labors. So that's it for me. <laughs> Okay, so from a development platform, for development platform, um, the first thing that actually people that usually are in RRC and etc. dealing with bugs and so on, we're going to see that we kind of revamped the ARM porting gen and we kind of planning to do completely kind of differently now. We're going to have the reports and we're going to show a different page just to, to go through the bugs and not use the launchpad because launchpad is not that good on that, on that thing. It should be, but it's not. And uh, then we'll be reporting the end of the week and showing exactly the progress, what are the critical bugs, and, and trying to, to motivate more people to actually jump on those bugs and, and, and see, to actually have all the progress and see how many bugs got fixed and so we'll actually add some more value and not just like, for example, some random, okay, you're going to participate, but we don't actually know how to participate. Then the big topic for us was the continuing integration, and we had a very good uh, uh, discussions on this on this topic. I mean, and we already have the plan to do continuous integration since the kernel to the whole platform, and how we're going to test it, and how we're going to integrate the whole companies from, our, from all the companies from our, the, the, all the working groups. So that's the, uh, uh, the most important thing that we wanted to discuss and want to get a plan over here. <coughs> so now we just we just need to make sure that we implement it. Um, then uh, we find with setting uh, uh, the, the how we're going to manage the config in the kernel. It's, it seems simple, but it's not. I mean, we've been discussing it yes for quite a long time. And uh, how we're going to manage the kernel packaging, and uh, how we're going to do the integration, how we're going to merge the both, uh, uh, how we're going to manage the config, and how we're going to manage the trees, and, and kind of package it all together, and, and push it to lava and test it, and so on. We kind of know and how we're going to do it right now, so we kind of expect a little more. Uh, <laughs> kind of the same config sets from all the kernels and kind of they're all behaving in the same way so it's we, and we are not in the best. You put planning again, we kind of go and going to have, John is kind of going to maintain the, the stable tree but kind of put some more work on the, the development tree now and it's kind of going to trace more closely what's going upstream and if you want to patch something and we want to fix it. Also to have, basically to have a tree to help the upstream work uh, basically, when it, for example, we got a fix function on that tree and the test and so on, and, and help, help testing upstream, at least on the, the, the person that we have. Because, like, for example, the past cycle, uh, we had one minor change, but actually, uh, that was support from the e if, even, you if, you even, dot tx, txt. We kind of replaced the boot FCR, but that was very critical because once we integrated, no images, and we broke all the images. And, we want to validate that and want to help validating the, the upstream tree because we, in the end we want, we, want to use, we want to use that for all the users where they all use are using it. And uh, we kind of have a good discussion with Lava and we were able to push some tests now to Lava and so we, we're going to run them on a daily basis. For example now it's the, with Bouchard and SM it's, it's very valuable because then we're going to have the, in a daily basis all the results and, and you can actually see the improvement over the time, like for example, good performance memory, bring value measurements, and so on. So that, that's most of it. Hi. Uh, on the
of a stricter side this week. Uh, we had we had some good discussions um, with with other teams during the week, uh, most of which you'll have heard already or we will be hearing about sooner. But we uh, we spent a lot of this week um, in our in our team room um, hacking on various things, and uh, I wanted to uh, make sure that the team got uh, some good things done this week. So I, I endeavoured to stay out of their way. Uh, so to help me understand what was going on, I uh, produced a, a hard copy version of status.lenara.org for the week. So this was pinned up in the team room, and I had the team keep it up to date with how they were doing on the particular particular goals. So you can see that everything has the check mark next to it. So uh, we we achieved all our goals for this week. Uh, the first one uh, was to learn something about Garrett's internals. As you heard from Zach, we're we're switching to Garrett for Android very soon, and Paul has been working on this, but wanted to uh, make sure that others in the team uh, understood this. So he went through with a couple of people. And, uh, uh, they looked over the, the transition plan and made sure that that made sense and learned a bit about how Garrett works internally. Uh, in addition to that, um, James has been working on uh, Linaro Fetch Image UI, which is a tool to download uh, root fesses and hardware packs and uh, run Linaro Media Create for you, uh, all through a simple GUI. Um, and we weren't quite happy with, uh, with some of the workflow in the GUI, it didn't quite match uh, uh, the, the way things were expected to work, so uh, he went through uh, and did a, a redesign of the GUI, and we have a we have a design for that now. Um, so a, a, a huge thing which happened this week, absolutely massive, led by led by uh, Deepti Kalikari, was um, we now have we now have uh, ci.lenara.org has been uh, doing kernel builds for a while, but since about an hour ago, <laughs> it's now pushing those builds into Lava, so that uh, Kernels uh, we're, is currently building the OMAP 2 plus dev config from Linux Lenara mm. and booting that on a Panda board in Lava. Um, I, I think it's set to every day or every every head change or something, uh, every two days perhaps. Um, I'm not a details man. Um, <laughs> so that's uh, that's absolutely huge and it's going to be, it's gonna be um, uh, a big part of our Kernel CI, which uh, Ricardo was just talking about. Uh, rolling out to Ubuntu as well. So, uh, fantastic go from Ubuntu there. Yeah. So, uh, almost as big, but um, mainly interesting to us because we have to maintain it. Um, Linaro Image Tools currently know, has all the uh, information in it about how to boot each of the boards we support. So, it has the boot args needed for IMX53, the boot args needed for Snowball, how to partition the, the images for them, and things like that. And this is a, this is a pain to maintain for us. Uh, it means that we usually have to respin Linaro image tools the day before every release because we forgot something, um, or, or one of the boards changed, or the kernel changed. Uh, so it's a headache from that point of view, and it's also a, a headache for the landing teams because they have to enable these things, and, and, and they're usually kernel engineers, and they have to come and learn a bit of Python and make a make a merge request for us. So um, we've been leading an effort co co we're calling Hardware Packs V2, which pushes all of this information into the Hardware Pack, so it's entirely self-contained. And you don't need to touch Linaro image tools at all, provided that you don't need to add support for, say, a new partition layout. Um, so uh, the the push for this week was to have at least one board booting using the hardware pack v2 information. And uh, Matthias was leaving this information, and uh, you can see here that he actually uh, exceeded expectation, <laughs> burst out of the little bubble, and went to 110% when he got it booting on both Panda and Beagleboard. He was hoping to get Snowball working as well, but his Snowball is apparently broken, so uh, he didn't get that one. But we should have the rest done over the next couple of weeks and get them merged. So again, that's really that's really big, and it's going to be a, a very, very important change for the landing teams and for, for platform releases. Um, so uh, two, uh, two smaller things to finish off. Um, uh, we've been working on patchwork for patches.lenara.org, and uh, we did some code review of the changes we currently have outstanding to patchwork. Um, so uh, useful, useful knowledge sharing there. And the final one uh, was working on a spec for private hardware pack builds. So we had a meeting with uh, member services yesterday and went over that spec. And um, we, uh, the, the, the acceptance criteria for this one was a complete spec for this, which makes Vicky happy. And so I hope that she is pleased with it because uh, we're now ready to start work on that. So uh, thank you, everyone. stand in for him. So what did we achieve this week? Uh, we moved up to GDB 7.3, uh, 
got some launchpad issues sorted out. Uh, cross debugging tests uh, now are identical to native debug tests. So this is if you're building and testing GDB in a cross environment, uh, the test results are almost identical or actually identical uh, to the test results you'd get if you built and tested it native. Um, we had a, a pretty interesting conversation with the Android group about how the Android build system works, uh, how they integrate the toolchain, and we had a we had an overview. So we both taken some actions, and we go back and look at it. Uh, primarily around figuring out at what point the toolchain group understands more about Android and how much the Android group look, look, looks at the toolchain. Uh, we had a, a one of the deliverable, deliverables for 11.11 is a binary toolchain. Uh, so we had some of the consumers of the binary toolchains in a room. So we sat down and we fleshed, fleshed out the plan. Uh, Mar Marson's uh, been looking at it from platforms, I guess. That's the right thing. And uh, I think we managed to agree on what we're doing. <coughs> Where, how, and who's going to be doing that is something that needs to be worked out. So Michael's going to be taking that forward. Uh, there was a when new futures brainstorm uh, where there were quite a lot of uh, discussions around what could be done with Quenu. Uh, but since we've got finite resources on Quenu, uh, we need to figure out priorities and directions with respect to that. Uh, other than that. We had a toolchain futures where we sort of sat down and brainstormed for an hour or so, uh, probably even more than an hour. And we talked about how we can use uh, all of the SOC. So one of the ideas that came up was, what do we do with something like OpenCL? So should we be looking at LLVM? What what should we be doing there? So uh, more questions than answers, I'm afraid. But yeah, it was interesting. Uh, and finally, the, uh, we had a, quite a lot of conversations around generic tuning, which was um, which is some, something that we want to do in the compiler, that is to try and generate code that will work well on all implementations of a V7A micro, <coughs> or all implementations of V7A micro architectures. Uh, of course, there'd be trade-offs that would be made uh, in terms of performance on one versus the other. So, interesting discussions and areas to be explored further. <coughs> Other than that, we had a few bug reports from people about uh, performance uh, regression. So, we put that into our queue and we're looking at them. And uh, we got a few vectorizer patches in. And uh, yeah, uh, there was a post today on the mail on the Lenaro toolchain list about uh, how much libAV codec is being uh, vectorized. So. Folks can do that. That's about it. Thanks. Uh, so we've had a really productive week this week with the Chrome team. Uh, we got a lot of device recording done. On uh, the OMF 3 platform, we figured out how to connect device tree with hard with a hardware mod, which has been a problem that we've been talking about in the community for a while. And uh, we'll have patches going upstream for OMAP 3, and I think OMAP 4 work will get done sometime next week. Um, MSM 86XX uh, platforms from Qualcomm, we've got basic device tree support working. Uh, the Exynos board, we've got a basic device tree board file, and uh, we'll have a serial, with serial console, correct? I think that's where we have a serial console working. Uh, 1891 also, we got a basic board file up and running. The MX53, uh, all the device drivers have been ported over just to work the device tree. And the board.c file will be updated now that we've got the basic drive, device drivers up and running. And the versatile board, we've got a basic skeleton up and running for device tree. Uh, with the single Z image hacking, uh, Kika wanted to point out that I submitted 12 patches myself and I still do write code once in a while. Um, but we've got a couple of dozen pa patches ready for upstream submission across the team related to various different areas. And we should be seeing these go upstream next week. Some of them need a little bit more cleanup or review. Uh, Russell uh, hung out with the kernel team for a couple hours and we had a really good discussion about various different topics around, consol uh, around consolidation, single Z image, device tree, all these things are sort of interconnected and you know, sort of 
what we discovered doing this work is that it's a very uh, multi-layered onion. We, we sort of say we're going to go attack this one area. As we start looking at that area, we figured out, well, to make this one area cleaned up, we have to go change all these device drivers. We have to go change this API over here, which also affects this area over here. You know, like I submitted some patches for x86 and for the Unicore 32 architecture, some basic <coughs> timer patches, because the, some of the work I was doing affects, affects everything in the kernel tree. Um, had a good conversation around uh, kernel process and how we're going to move forward with that. We've had a lot of conversations the last few last month or so about what is what is the Linux Linux kernel? What does it look like? What goes into it? What are we testing? Uh, what do we do when we find a bug? So I feel like we've gotten good clarification about what all of that process looks like, and I'm going to follow up with sort of documenting all of that in the wiki in a place where everyone can find it. Uh, John Stultz did an awesome job working with the Android team and getting Origin up and running on uh, Android, or Android up and running. Well, <laughs> and then um, also I want to thank uh, David Brown and Nicholas Fair. I hope they pronounced that right. Uh, come out for coming out here and helping uh, work on device tree. They got their platforms up and running, which is really great to see some involvement from the community and seeing some of the device tree work go beyond just what we're doing within the Linario members. Uh, thank you. Hi all. Uh, in the power management working group, uh, we had a really good week. Uh, for the thermal framework, we came in here uh, uh, with the thermal framework uh, working for OMAP, and uh, within uh, about four or five hours, we actually had something working on Exynos and uh, the Snowball platforms. Uh, Michael was kind enough to do a great uh, uh, video for us. Uh, I suggest you go look at that. Uh, there's lots of coffee involved. That's the only hint <laughs> I'll give out. Um, around consolidated idle save and uh, restore port. So ARM's been trying to push uh, consolidated uh, idle and save uh, idle uh, uh, save and restore code, uh, which would basically get rid of a lot of uh, uh, platform uh, specific duplication uh, for the last bit of the sleep code. And uh, we actually managed to uh, get the Samsung platform converted over uh, within a day uh, using that code. So that would basically get rid of a lot, lot of code uh, uh, per platform. Uh, we plan to uh, do the same to the ST Ericsson platform uh, within uh, the next few weeks. Uh, regarding Shed MC uh, behavior analysis, so uh, Vincent uh, walked us through all the research he's been doing around uh, uh, multi-core scheduling uh, and optimizing on ARM. Uh, we basically got into the guts of the scheduler, how it works, how the scheduling domains are laid out. There was lots of uh, audience participation, lots of questions, and uh, uh, we've taken some actions on further uh, studies there. Uh, we also uh, uh, spent some time with uh, Paul's team, uh, the validation team uh, around power measurements. And uh, I'd like to call out uh, some great work done by uh, Amit Kacha. Uh, this week he's been a machine, absolutely. So actually he's been involved with all of this. So he's actually uh, gotten uh, Exynos uh, thermal framework working, uh, idle save restore code working, and he's also been helping the Android team here figuring out the power top uh, stuff. So great work, Anna. Thank you. Ooh, who comes next? Uh, you got to press the button. <laughs> <laughs> the graphics? Sorry, I, I think it's. Yeah. All right. The suspense is killing us. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, as, as you may remember, if you, if you can remember back that far, I'm, I'm having trouble these days. Uh, we had uh, three sort of primary objectives and, uh, and a few other minor ones. And what I'll say uh, to start off with is we, uh, we diverged slightly on, on one of them, but I actually think that what we ended up with was, was actually quite a lot cooler. So um, we, uh, we really sat down and, and fin finally got a, a really, really good uh, vision and direction for what we want. The, the user experience with, with profiling GPU to look like. Um, so I need to uh, spend more time after now with, uh, uh, with, with Paul to uh, try to see how we can leverage what his team's already been doing uh, on the validation side of, of that. Uh, and uh, But we, we have, I think, like I said, what is a really good direction and, and vision for that. Um, and I'll, I'll, ha I'll happily bore anybody who's interested with it later. Um, uh, Travis got a bunch of work done on uh, on getting the new uh, shader plugin API uh, 
for, for Comp is, which is awesome and is, uh, is really huge because it means we, we can actually merge this week. So that's really cool. Um, we, uh, uh, Alexandros uh, spent a bunch of time with, uh, with uh, the <coughs> Android team uh, getting the porting of GeoMark up and running. Uh, and it's, uh, it's not quite there yet, but uh, I think it's really good progress and, and certainly uh, learned a lot. Um, we also spent a fair amount of time planning out uh, where we're going to take uh, the, the benchmark utilities that we've got and the kinds of work that we're going to do with them. And uh, to, to that, we, uh, one of the things that we did just, uh, uh, I don't know, like an hour ago, was uh, added support for a new um, uh, 3D model file format so we can uh, leverage a whole new database of, uh, of freely available uh, 3D models to use for the, for the benchmark. So things should get really cool really quickly there. Uh, I'm sure I'm forgetting something, but uh, <laughs> um, I, I, think that's, uh, I think that's mostly about it for, for on, the, on the sort of core graphic side. Sorry, I should have waited longer for the applause. Uh, <laughs> all right, on the memory management side, uh, that was also hugely fruitful. Um, again, we, we started off with sort of three major things, and uh, we ended up, uh, I think, nailing all of them and even a little bit more. So um, our, our longer term roadmap, uh, we've, we've had a roadmap, but uh, we weren't really clear what a lot of the stuff was going to look like. And now I think we really have kind of, we really have kind of gotten a pretty good, uh, you know, design on things all the way up through the high level user space API. So, you know, we, we pretty much know what it's going to look like for, you know, GStreamer to hand something off to, to EGL and, and we've got, uh, we had somebody from the EGL working group here helping us out with, uh, with the spec that's going to be needed for the new extension. Um, we clarified some of the, the short-term work, um, and, uh, and Kurt's group is going to is, is, uh, kindly agree to, to help out a bunch with that, which is huge, um, because uh, it's, there's some weird video stuff involved. So uh, we think it's going to be uh, I think it's going to be a really good, uh, really good bit of synergy there. Um, we had Zach come by for a bit, and we talked uh, about the, our Android integration story. Um, and uh, we sat down with, uh, with well, when Russell came, uh, the first thing he did was sat down with uh, Arndt and Paul and uh, Marek and myself and Dave, and I'm forgetting somebody, but anyway, uh, and we managed to sit down and thanks to Paul for keeping us on, on track and on target and for keeping things organized and getting us to agree on everything with respect to the large physical allocation support. Uh, so that's huge. Because there's been a fair amount of contention over that. So um, that's it for Unified Memory Management. So I was waiting to see if there was going to be another slide for Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> so my voice, my voice doesn't carry as well as Jesse, so I'll stand close to the mic. Um, so the multimedia working group also had a very productive week. Uh, the Open Max vendor survey was completed this week. We called through that. We'll do a little more cleanup and focus out on the wiki, but it's in a really good shape. Um, also, oh, yes. So the so we had a visitor, Liam, uh, visited us uh, uh, for the conference. It was uh, really excellent that he could come down. So we had to talk through audio and also his UCM plans. Um, we had a bit of a surprise, at least it was to me, um, and walked through both for other Linux and for Android, uh, the, the plan for how we were going to implement UCM. And we believe that we may actually be able to implement a, an Android solution uh, quicker than we will for other Linux, so stay tuned there. We have a few few hurdles that we were hoping to uh, pound out at Plumbers. <laughs> uh, yeah, good. Excellent progress there. Um, right, we also kicked off the Neon Optimization Forum. That's the forum, and this was the kickoff face-to-face -face meeting, as I told you all about Monday. Um, we, it, was, it was very well attended. Um, there was uh, 13 to 15 people there at any one time. Uh, the tool chain folks showed up and uh, we had some lively discussion. And uh, because of that success and the uh, initial seeding work that Ronnie has done um, and the presentations that we had there, we're actually going to look at uh, taking this forward and maybe have another uh, uh, optimization forum face-to-face -face at 
uh, possibly Orlando. Um, right. So, right. So there were some optimization work. Yes. Okay. So this is kind of stuck under here, but uh, we we had some optimization discussions and. There may be some, some other work that we can do outside of codec optimization in the also in Pulse Audio, Pulse Audio stack. Uh, and there may be some work that we can do with speech codecs, uh, uh, specifically speaks. <coughs> right, so Jesse kind of talked a little bit about the, the plan. We had intentions of maybe drawing out an API sketch, but we at least have, I think, a very good overview Components. Sorry, a very good overview of the components. Um, who's doing that work? What the flow is? And we're going to start documenting all this and, and helping Jesse uh, get these ideas to come together and get them documented for everyone. Um, that's just the first steps, and then we have talked about other steps that we can help that effort as well. And then, <clears throat> uh, as Zach said earlier, we there was also work in the team to uh, work with the Android team to. Uh, and make progress towards uh, getting the JPEG Turbo up and going with Android. Uh, that was it for our week. So am I going to touch this and see if forms on it? Ah, okay. All right, food architecture. Uh, we had a whole bunch of people in the room to, uh, all day today to talk about the issues that are surrounding uh, defining the firmware, the how we go from power up to the firmware, uh, from you know so that being UBU to UEFI, and then on into the kernel. And uh, in the course of discussion, kind of discovered that a lot of what's been talked about here, while it's really important for embedded, there's lots of interesting things and things that can be improved to make it easier and faster to bring devices to market. It's really driven by server. That is the possibility of putting uh, by putting ARM chips into commodity platforms like servers, we absolutely have to define down what's going to happen, what the firmware is going to provide. Uh, we have to understand that we're going to be in a heterogeneous environment, that uh, we don't get to rule the roost like we do in the embedded platform, but there's going to be uh, players like Microsoft who are going to hit, be putting their requirements on the firmware implementation as well, and therefore we need to play nice with others to make sure that when these, uh, when these servers do start arriving on the market, that they're going to behave in a way that we as the Linux community can use them without being very unhappy about the design decisions that have been made. <laughs> so what that, ha what that means is, first of all, for the discussions today, we spent a lot of time going over what are the use cases? What are the actual problems that are being solved? Uh, the most interesting one for me was uh, Ian from Zen, uh, Zen Source, I can't remember the name of it. It's Citrix, that's right. When Citrix came to talk about Zen and the requirements that he has, not just for getting data out of the firmware, but then emitting data back out to the Linux kernel on the other side and manipulating it in some way. So understanding the use cases and what they were trying to do was really huge for that discussion. Uh, kind of what came out of it is, on the server, it looks like UEFI is going to be a big uh, many machines are going to be implementing UEFI. Since that's the case, it is vital for us to be involved. It's vital for us to have engineers on it, working on it, make sure that it boots Linux reliably and well so that our, uh, the Linux distributions that are relying on the infrastructure will work. And it means that we need to be involved with the UEFI forum with the uh, arm binding sub team. And David Mandela and from Canonical, John Masters from Red Hat are both going to be on that team. Someone from Lunaro, possibly me, will be on that as well. So I'm really excited about that, that we made good progress there. And then the other side is there was lots of little technical details. We didn't hack on any code or anything, but we identified that, yes, there's little bits and pieces that need to be specified. So just little engineering things, the normal stuff that comes out from technical discussion. But overall, I thought it was a fantastic meeting, and I think it's a better understanding of what problem we're trying to solve, and we've got a lot of, a big pile of action items now on what to do next. Thank you. Okay. I haven't prepared any slides for today because we just had a 
brainstorming session for the pretty much the whole week. And it would be quite scary to see the results of brain there after a week of sleep deprivation. So I don't want to inflict that on you. Um, I will try to be short because I don't want to, I think I'm the last one, and I don't want to delay you too much before you go to the bar, the party. Otherwise, we'll start to pick me, so I'll try to be short. I want to start by thanking Stefan for making it possible for the Video for Linux uh, developers to come here and gather and have a really great week and uh, interesting week. So, thank you and to all the you know, members who made it possible as well. So, a couple of years ago, we started realizing that the Video for Linux API that we had back then was simply not featureful enough from the, the embedded hardware and all the embedded devices that were arriving in the market. So we had to do something about that, and we had actually two possible strategies. The first was, was to completely ignore the problem and hoping that uh, vendors would stop creating embedded devices. And fortunately, that didn't work out. So we had to go for the second strategy, which, which was to enhance all the APIs we had and create new APIs for all the interesting use cases and all the crazy hardware design that uh, were coming to the market. And I'm quite happy today because uh, we actually have been to uh, hammer out a couple of really uh, annoying issues that, uh, that we still had in the new APIs that we created. Uh, and I think that we can say today that the video for Linux and the media control APIs uh, are ready to be used by uh, all the embedded device vendors for their, their multimedia and well, video related needs, uh, the camera and the display. Level. So that's a big message that uh, we want to, to pass to the vendors and that we <coughs> managed to pass a couple of them who are present this week is that we need to work together. Uh, we are already working in a close relation, relationship with uh, people from Samsung uh, who are using what we do and uh, we, we develop and we enhance the APIs for the needs. Uh, we started to, uh, to, to work with uh, people from TI as well. There has been uh, interest from people from ST Rixan. So that was uh, also a big achievement for for this week was really to, uh, to talk to the vendors and to try to get uh, everybody, everybody into the same boat. Another really interesting thing that I actually hadn't planned at all is that uh, we managed to talk <coughs> to uh, people from the uh, Android community and Android developers uh, because ultimately the goal is to uh, try to get Android to use the video for Linux and the media control API as well. Uh, and well, there's still a lot of work to be done for that. Uh, but we started having discussions about this, and uh, it's, uh, it's a goal that should we, we should have for maybe one or two, two years' time uh, to get uh, at least a reference implementation, something that people can use in Android, and to show that uh, Android can run with the video for this media control with standard IPR instead of a completely properly stacked drivers. So we hope we'll, we'll be able to do that. Uh, last but not least, we have also participated in the Memory Management Summit. Uh, memory management is something that is really important for the, for the multimedia devices. Uh, we need to be able to uh, achieve zero copy and passing buffers, big buffers of data around uh, with, uh, very efficiently uh, to, uh, to get the fastest uh, better real time to, to really reduce the experience. So that has been quite interesting as well. Uh, as Jesse has already mentioned, we will have CMA going in the kernel. Uh, we're working on uh, DNA buffer API. That to use to pass buffers around to uh, have some kind of central data. So there's lots of stuff to be done, there's a sense of doing what we have to, to be working uh, on this week. And I think that's it. I don't know if I've forgotten anything. Okay, that's great. Then, Uh, I'm Vicki Janicki from Member Services, and yes, we've been around this week. Uh, we were in lots of different rooms. Um, there were sort of, this was not a major event for us in that we didn't bring all the member, the landing team members here. Uh, we're doing an offset, but we did have quite a few come from some of the teams, like Samsung. We had a kickoff this week with the TI team. It was the first time they'd ever gotten together. And so they were able to um, actually sit in the same room and hack on things. I know that they've been working with Zach team, Zach's team all week. Um, and in addition, we had this other side, which is meeting with the members who came here and t doing a touch base. What's the feedback? Let's work on some issues. And so we were able to do that with ARM, with TI, and Freescale this week. And 
set the stage for what's going to happen next because we're going to be looking at renewing or updating the SOWs of the work we're doing. This stuff is changing so fast. The other thing that uh, I learned this week is that don't get behind George when he's driving, especially if it's a go part. Uh, white bait tastes pretty good. <laughs> and that Isaac Newton would really enjoy uh, being at this conference. So, um, thank you. All right. Um, wow. I hope you guys are all as frazzled memory as I am. So I think we've seen some pretty amazing things this week. I think I've seen some pretty amazing things at least. I've seen Alexander suggest we should have a legal working group. Oh. I've seen Russell King said he liked the CMA patch sets. And today, I saw Grant said that he must work with UEFI. I did not think I would live to see this. So these are very visible things that I, I wanted to call out. But um, I want just to wrap up by saying that there are two teams that have done work that has been, like, from the beginning, instrumental to Lenaro being here. And they're the two teams which we talk the least about. It's because the teams that we talk the least about are the ones which run the most smoothly, that would deliver the most value continually. And so we just assume they're a baseline, that they're there and they would never disappear. So I'm just calling out infrastructure and developer platform. These two teams, from the beginning, have put together everything that Lenaro's built on. It's just actually, if you think about it, it's a bit, it's a bit amazing that if we didn't have stuff like Lenaro Image Create, um, sorry, Lenaro Image Tools and Lenaro Media Creates, um, Lava, the setup of the infrastructure and validation lab there, um, patcheslenaro.org, summitlenaro.org, um, what else do we have? statuslenaro.org, ci.lenaro.org, all these things which everybody takes for granted, that things are just there and they just work, that those teams have, have pulled together. And the fact that we have images for all these boards, built reliably, released every day, every time, you know, on time, Alexander and Ricardo and, um, and Zach have just had a fantastic job these last months and I'm just really, really proud to see the effort that they've put in. So, just wanted to finish up by thanking those teams. Thanks very much, guys. Uh, just if the um, management team just want to come up, so Joe and George and Dave. Thank you. So, no. Okay, so we'll, we'll just stand up. I'm still going to stand up. We're just there. We just want to have a, have a bit of time for, for you guys really to ask um, us anything so, you want. Before we do that, is this being recorded? <laughs> uh, it is now. Just like this is being recorded. Checking on, you know, and we're going to send it to Dave's mum, and uh, <laughs> she'll do what she wants. We should ask Joe where his library is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm, so uh, it'd be great to get feedback uh, on uh, this week in particular. Obviously, it's the first time we've run uh, an event like this, uh, but you may also have questions on where Lenar is going, where. You know, questions on decisions we've made in the past and things like that. So, um, again, feel free to ask those. And we'll do this for sort of. Um, uh, as long as we until you run out. Until you run out. Yeah, I suppose about 15 minutes or so, uh, and then we'll wrap up and get the final <laughs> um, But I'm just going to uh, kick off by asking George a question, uh, just to set him up. So, um, uh, to, yeah, I mean, uh, we, you set out the sort of strategy at the beginning of the week, and I'm just interested with all the work that's been going on. This week we've got um, the arm part of meeting next week. Is there anything we can see has changed things? Um, so, we, for those who don't know, we're, most of us are attending the arm part of meeting next week. Uh, we wanted to use this on. Yeah, no. um, so, we're attending the arm part of meeting next week. We're visiting with over 20 companies, I think, over three days. Uh, so it's going to be very intense. Um, and we had a presentation which we're preparing for next week. We have half hour meetings with each company, so it has to be a very quick presentation because we actually want to spend most of the time talking to them. And I think to answer your question, the thing that, that I've been hugely impressed with this week is, is two things. One, uh, something that I think is very special about Linaro, which is that all of the member companies have uh, engineers here and they have worked together 
and enjoyed themselves working together. There's no barriers, and this is the best thing about open source and, and, and the companies who are involved. I know it's for some of you it's a very different way of working, but I'm incredibly impressed by how excited everybody's been and how closely they've worked together. So, so well done everybody on that. And that's a message that we take back to prospective members saying this is really going to change some of the things that you can do in your companies and you will really get a lot of value from joining Monaro. And the other thing I think to, that, that, that I would add in terms of things that have happened this week is the, the additional um, amount of work that's gone on in all of these areas in test, validation, continuous integration of the kernels, the Android demonstrations we're doing, all of these things come up and there's a, a Prospective members are always extremely interested in, in, in our activities, and I'm sure I'm going to have some stories from this week. Apart from those more to, uh, to, to add. And so, thank you very much. Okay, so who wants to ask any questions? Yeah, real question this time. Arndt. So, where do we stand on the number one technical problem having open source graphics project? Are you making progress on that one? Are you making progress on that one? Uh, yeah, I was just going to say no. <laughs> um, are we making progress? Not very quickly. Am I hopeful? Yes. Um, I think as part of, a, you know, as particularly around the memory management work and stuff, and deciding to pull together those frameworks, then that gives us the opportunity to start pulling that in. But in fact, the, the open source, changing where the barriers are, is one part of this. Removing them all together, having completely open source drives and another, it's a long, more difficult problem. But that's what Lenaro is doing, and, uh, and Lenaro is surprising me in some of the heavy lifting we're doing. But it's going to take time. What could Lenaro do? Reverse engineer, you actually expect to try? Sorry? Reverse engineer. Maybe we'll have that as a mini challenge. We will be starting to put in the legal working group. <laughs> As we as we uh, as we go on, we seem to be kind of kind of a, a, a point of gravity in, in the in the ARM ecosystem, and we have all these other complete competing communities. Not maybe well competing and and, and other communities. How are we? How are we working to actually work with those communities proactively and, and try to, um, so I guess put another way, are we going to try to consolidate communities or are we going to try to work with them outside of one another? But um, my approach is always to work where the, where the natural center of gravity is. Right? And so if it's in Lenaro, and kind of surprised ourselves with memory management being, you know, it's like, oh, we'll, we'll have a go. We've got some engineering and we'll host people and that's going to work. Maybe for other topics it's outside of the NARA and part of work there. Uh, and um, I'm very keen on working with whichever community is open to be worked with in whatever way it happens. Um, and there are an awful lot of different communities tackling different areas and different problems. And that's fine. There's, there doesn't appear to me at least to be large overlaps. There's, there's some scoping things where, where Lenaro is not really tackling traditional deeper embedded things, um, you know, 19, 920, 926 based platform, 1176, and all this stuff. But in the main, I don't think it's a huge amount, but the is an interesting. Sure, there's a mic here. Um, I think that we will definitely reach out and. What I want is for Lenaro to have much, many more contact points out to open source and into member companies. So I don't want us to be this like inward focus, like little Galapagos style organization. I want this to be like something which the members actually feel they can get their engineers talking to us. And you know, if, if there's stuff happening on info, important Panda mailing lists and you're doing work on Panda, then I expect you to be there as well. So I think that, I think that we need to reach out and, and we definitely need that voice to be heard more widely. That's the, that's the way we actually make ourselves seen as like a permanent feature, like everybody is everywhere. You know, Lenaro needs to be felt as if it's everywhere. Yeah, I think we're
from the front members about the barriers to using Lenaro's that they used Right, so uh, not just this week. For me, this is a really big theme for what we do. We're doing all this great stuff, we're upstreaming all this great stuff, there's a lot of fantastic work going on, but at the end of the day, the most important thing, I think, the most important measurement for us is our members, and even the larger community, are they actually using what we're doing for real things? And, and from, our, from my perspective in member services, the stuff that we do really needs to be able to be used by our members for their products because at the end of the day, that's really how they measure whether the effectiveness of Lenaro for them is does it help them grow their business, does it help them bring in new customers, does it, does it really impact what they do from a business perspective because at the end of the day, our members, while we're a nonprofit organization, our members are not a profitable organization and at the end of the day, they measure that profit and their margin and it's critical for us to be able to have a bottom line impact for them uh, when they tally up uh, uh, that aspect of their operations. And I think that we're starting to do a really good job in that regard. Even over the last four weeks, every one of our SOC members has been approached by an OEM or an ODM, uh, specifically with Lenaro requirements for the next for their next product, for a product that they're working on, which is just fantastic news. And it means that, okay, we're only a year old, and already we're starting to connect and we have the first indication to say, yes, the stuff that we're doing is being valued, not just by our members, but by their customers, and they're coming back to our members saying, hey, we need Lenaro. The people in our members who chose Lenaro, and the people who work on it, like yourselves, like many of yourselves, look, look great. It was a great visionary decision to become part of the, this, the organization, for us to grow the organization, and it's starting to, to, to show results for them. Has anybody seen my laundry? <laughs> Do you have any expectations in terms of where we'll be in terms of headcount in a year's time or six months' time? That kind of thing? Wow, um, we have some we have some guesses, um, and they, they really are guesses. Um, so the way Lenaro grows, as I said on Monday, is by attracting additional members uh, into into Lenaro, and that will grow our headcount, um, partly because of the resources they put in, and partly because uh, of the resources that we're then able to add to the organization. Um, we will be announcing very shortly um, the partner program that we're putting together. We're extending it, and several of the large uh, OEMs <coughs> are going to be putting a small number of engineers into the NARA. They're not joining us full members. Uh, we really want to focus our efforts on the SOC members and supporting those members. Um, and we're going to encourage some of the bigger OEMs, OEMs to put some engineers into the NARO to work with us on projects that our members want to work with on. Um, and also add resources to some of our working groups and areas that they're interested in, like power management uh, and like Android. Um, to answer your question, our guess, our estimate, is that over the next 12 months, we're going to attract at least two more, and we think it may be substantially more than two more members. And therefore, I can quite easily see us being back in the Naro Connect in a year's time and, and be twice the size we are today. Um, it may be one and a half, it may be two and a half times, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be significantly bigger than we are today. Uh, moving, moving forward, how are we going to co work with Sam um, more closely with those upstream OS vendors, specifically Google? Um, so, our goal in Lenaro, our, our fundamental goal is to upstream everything that we do. We want to get more of our technology upstream so it gets into the distributions as quickly as possible. And so that the differences, if you like, between the art vendors, this common code that gets into the upstream as quickly as possible and reduces this, this cost of maintaining uh, individual implementations in, in the SOC vendors. In order to get that upstream, so we've got two things. What, what Joe is doing is helping members use our technology before it gets back down into the distribution. Um, our aim is to work more closely and bring the distributions into Lenaro. And, and I'm really pleased that we've got representatives from Fedora, from Red Hat, from, uh, we've been uh, here at Connect. We've been working with the Google team 
on an engineering level, a lot of the memory management discussions we've been having have originated and we've also uh, involved engineers from the Google kernel group. Um, and we are increasing visibility. Uh, we are being noticed more and more within Google. Um, there was recently a meeting between ARM and Google where Lenaro was identified as being a key strategic opportunity for, for Google to leverage in order to get a wider uh, access to hardware more, more quickly and get Android products to, to market more quickly. So one of the things that I think we will see over the next six months is gradually an increase in involvement with Google and um, uh, obviously we have extremely close and good relationships with Canonical and Ubuntu because of our history and where we are and our goal is to build increasingly close relationships with Google and help them um, and that will involve Android and may even involve some, some work on the Chrome web and things to give some, some new challenges to us all. Um, <coughs> Servers coming based on A15 architecture and beyond. You know, so, so really, a lot of what I care about is is getting that technology ready and solving the problem. You see what a lot of people do. Yeah, yeah. 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 And you know, so I think what's this space really? But I'm also really interested in heterogeneous multi-core computing and interesting problems and how this all relates to classic Kubernetes. So some, these, are, these technologies are all starting to merge, uh, as well as scalable, high-performance high computing everything. So, Michael, I'm going to something more. Um, when's Orlando? October. November. Uh, yeah, there's probably some more things that we're talking about. I would actually comment that a couple of the prospective members who we do expect to bring in over the next months. Um, at least one of them is extremely interested in the whole ARM server uh, market opportunity. So where our current members are today very mobile focused and some of them also have interest in IBI and set top boxes, um, I think we're going to, as our membership increases, we'll be expanding the scope of the kind of things that we're dealing with the server will be one of those things. So I think that's quite exciting. I, I'm really, um, stunned by how much we've achieved in a year and, and you have, have made that happen. Um, we up here have not you have. And um, I think if we can go on um, go on delivering the kind of things that we delivered over the last year and continue that, continue growing over the next year, um, it's going to get even more exciting. And every every member I've spoken to, and, and we have a members meeting on Monday, so I hope they don't change their minds, but they, they've all told me they they had high hopes for Lenaro, um, but so far Lenaro has exceeded those high hopes, and, and we've, we've done very, very well, and they want us to keep going, and they want us to keep pushing. So well done to all of you on that. <coughs> Questions? Other than the uh, new legal working group, um, are there any uh, new areas that you see Lenaro branching out into as a developer involved There are a couple of areas that I think whether we have working groups, whether we have um, uh, whether we have sort of cross working group uh, uh, or a team set up, um, certainly there's interest in IBI. Some of you know that um, Canonical have uh, started working with Geneva and ourselves and there is a Geneva compliant uh, Ubuntu build, which, which gets the Geneva compliance required, meets the Geneva re compliance requirements, including all of the Geneva specific packages. Um, and of course, Lenaro is a great place for the vendors um, to be able to say they have a Geneva compliant solution out of the box because if Lenaro supports the hardware that, that, that we do, then it just runs. And so I do think that there may be an increase of interest in. Uh, IBI, and we may start doing some work and 
impact sports who are working in that area. Um, the other is in set-top boxes. There's increasing interest in our in the set-top box world. Um, so maybe that we start uh, looking at some expertise in that area. And of course the server area. Yeah, and then the, the <laughs> other areas of new interests like UEFI and so on, and then OPCL and LLVM. Plenty of, plenty of new stuff. Um, what about low end embedded? I, I was wondering if there are a few people that are interested in projects and support the SMC project, including they're getting that out. Is this something that we are going to take Is this part of it? No, no, well, no. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> no comment. No, no, so, uh, no, uh, it, I'll never say never see what happens. But, we don't want, we do, one of the challenges of any startup, particularly startups that start achieving a lot, is they tend to, to overreach. You know? And I think we do want to stay very focused, we want to do more of the same. There are certain opportunities that are where are, and basically we're driven by our members, right? so, so we don't choose what to do in some respects, our members do. And, and that's driven by their business needs and successes. So um, as they see value that Banara is delivering, I'm sure they're going to ask us to do more. And then the job of the TSC is to try and prioritize that. Zach, you've been waiting for a while. Yeah, so I think we're doing really fantastic work at Banara. I think one of the things that, one of the big issues that's simmering under the surface is hardware availability. So what are we doing to actually anticipate problems with hardware availability and actually make sure that we can get hardware into developers' hands easily so that we can do our work efficiently. Um, so building low-cost development boards is not easy, actually. Um, it's kind of not like a phone where it's the worst you can do is drop it. Like you just have to touch one of these boards and you can zap it and um, inherently by the nature of what it is, it's not reliable. And bringing up early silicon and then putting that early silicon onto the development boards and getting it right the first time, you don't traditionally go through the whole production process of creating a product. You may build a few thousand phones, you field test them, you then may build, but this is the first hundred boards that have ever been built. So inherently it's a messy process and inherently you're never going to get very good latest development boards by definition. Um, but, having said that, I've commented before that I think the availability of low-cost development boards to the community actually transforms the opportunities for some of the vendors in terms of reaching a long tail of customers. Um, and TI, obviously, were the leaders for this one. They did Beagle, which is now widely used in the community, and then Panda, and, and, and um, I hope that they continue down that path. What's interesting is that all the other vendors have followed, and, and it's even earlier for them, so it's harder for them. But I think we'll see over the next 12 months dramatic improvements in quality and availability <coughs> of all of these low-cost boards. And where initial mistakes have been made, they will learn from them. They're hardware vendors, they know how to do this stuff, and it will take time. And some of the third parties may be changed out to work with bigger companies because they're more sure about the business proposition. So I'm actually very excited. I know it's frustrating, particularly for landing teams. You get this board at last, and you turn it on, and it doesn't work. Um, but I do think that will change. The other comment is on new hardware. Um, so for example, on A15, um, uh, one of the things that we're looking forward to is, is obviously first silicon from the vendors who are providing A15 chips. Um, and until then, um, we're kind, of, we're kind of saying, well, we've got all this stuff upstream, we really want to try it. We are going to get a, a very expensive development board from ARM um, with an FPGA uh, implementation. I and it costs £17,000 for one. Uh, so we're not going to be buying very many because our members tell us to be very careful with our money. But we are going to, to get one as quickly as possible and use it to validate um, the, kernel, the Lenaro kernel, which has been used to buy on to, to, to bring up the board. And then we want to actually validate the Lenaro LEB, the Android LEB and the Ubuntu LEB, on that FPGA board 
and really get our members, the first members who are delivering A15 chips in the best possible place we can with a validated piece of software that they can then just bring up on their silicon. That's the goal. So, so I think um, the part of the design flow for the members and for other partners is now to produce a local school. It's part of what they do is part of bringing the team back. <coughs> See if they'll get better and the volume will get better. And <coughs> And, um, and George and I and Joe this morning heard about a um, the Naro community group has just been formed in Japan using some of these high cost boards. So, there, there are lots of ways of actually fixing that problem there, and I'm not sure exactly which of them you're asking about. So one of the problems that, that I see that we have is it's hard for you to get your hands on an ARM development device. You know, you use this developer board, but to be honest, it's pretty inconvenient to work with. So the fact that you can't produce native binaries and run them on your on, on, on an ARM board, on, on an ARM computer, I think is, is one thing which is a big limiter, and we haven't seen that fabled ARM laptop actually come out here, something that you could use as your main development box. And I think that's something which does stifle innovation and really hurts open source in general because Linux doesn't have one, you know? So how can you care about these? Oh, we said we bothered about flashing this thing on a board and then seeing how it boots. You know, that's too arcane for him. So that's one of the things that I think does really limit how effective we, we are. I think with the low cost boards, we have to be a little bit patient. I think the problem is that we're, we're seeing them just come out, you know, they're coming out of the oven right now, and so this, this furthest set of problems you should expect to see, and that the software bring up will also cause issues there, I think is just a natural part of it. And it's tough because these guys are innovating a lot, and so if you think about how long will map 4 is going to be current before the next family comes out, you know, just, just how much people have compressed their timelines there, I think you should expect that there will be some instability when these, the, the first silicon comes out. I remember Vijay telling me about you know, Panda, and we were saying, okay, Panda's almost here, and it took a long time for us to actually be able to order in quantities. Jesse did this hack about getting five people in the office to, sorry, getting N people in the office to order five at a time and so on, so you know, the stuff is scarce in the beginning. and. I just think that that in itself I don't think will go away. That problem will continue to happen as we expect more out of these things. You know, we expect these boards to come out earlier. We expect to have access to A15 now. What next? You know, so I think that's a natural part of it. But I think not having a V7 based laptop is a big problem for us. You know, it really limits it really makes us, you know, a little bit of the Galapagos Islands that I was mentioning before. Like our the ARM community is a little bit like that because it's hard for you to show to other people what is it, what it is exactly that we're building and we care about. So that's one thing that I think I'd like to see fixed, but I don't think Lenar is in a position really to fix that beyond reminding people about it. Okay, now for the hard questions. Yeah, Come on, the hard ones now. Okay, then following up with um, Linus doesn't have an ARM laptop. Have we got any glimmer of when we get Linus an ARM laptop? <laughs> we all seem to be focused on embedded and server. Uh, are we? Paying any attention to the desktop stuff as we work, and is there any of any hardware which is desktop? We definitely do pay attention to the desktop. If you look at, you know, we've, done, we've worked on the Unity ports, and so you do have a fully functional Ubuntu desktop on an ARM device. Yeah, the hardware availability is really, I think, what, what's what's the stemming us there. Um, I think it's, I think it's coming. Right, um, the work. The, the, the Google is extending from phones into tablets. Chrome today on Intel, but, but um, it would not be surprising if Chrome ARM uh, devices come out. They'll have longer battery life. They may overcome some of the, the issues that, that have inflicted that afflicted the first ones. Um, I also think there's a lot going on in uh, the open source world around trying to build better tablet and desktop systems and clearly Ubuntu is part of that, um, Android and Chrome are part of that um, and I think that the situation will change over the, over the next year or two. I, th I think the A15, ha a multi-core A15 has enough grunt to, to really put a pretty respectable laptop together or tablet together. Um, so uh, I wouldn't give up hope on that one. I think it's going to be an exciting next 12 to 18 months. No, I think it's coming. Like if you have the, if some people have an AC100 around, it's already like the beginnings of what you'd have. You know, it's not a perfect developer machine already, but 
It's the beginnings of it. <laughs> How many years is that? All right, any more? Okay. Do you want to say anything about this? Yes. You said that you will uh, use those ARM FPGA to test A15. Yes. But will you test A5 on them? Yes. They are, yes. They are well, yes. different habits, but yeah. Yes. Yeah, we've paid all that money, we want to get the most out of it. <laughs> I do. Can you change five?